So uh, we are in lecture 10th and this is a very important uh, topic from a political science point of view that is AC power analysis. So we have uh, covered most of the portion from the DC circuits. Now we'll uh, go for the AC power analysis in the AC circuits. So power in AC circuits that we are going to take. So the most common form of electric power is basically the 50 hertz or 60 hertz AC power. In India, we have 50 hertz AC power. In US, we have 60 hertz AC power. So the power which is transmitted, distributed or utilized, anything, those all powers are in the form of AC that is alternating current and the frequency lies at 50 hertz or 60 hertz. So that are most common form of the power. Why we are preferring AC power over DC is that when we need to transmit the power over high voltage uh, power transmission line then uh, from the power generating plant then the loss associated with that will be less. So that is the reason uh, we are preferring the AC power over DC power so that the loss while uh, transmitting the power from the generating plant to the consumer end will be less. Now, the first term that we are going to introduce in uh, AC power analysis is the instantaneous power. Instantaneous power is denoted by small p and in bracket with a light t because it is a function of time. What is the definition of instantaneous power? So, instantaneous power is basically that power which is absorbed by an element and it is expressed as the product of two quantities. One is the voltage and another is the current. Both voltage and current are instantaneous that is at a particular instant of time. So they are function of time and they are instantaneous. Now if we go by the mathematical equation then the instantaneous power is the product of the instantaneous voltage and instantaneous current. Now voltage and current in the time domain we can write in the form of sinusoidal quantity with a maximum magnitude of Vm cos of omega t plus theta v. Theta v indicates the phase of voltage with respect to the reference that is 0 degree. Uh, current is basically having the maximum magnitude as Im and here we have the phase difference as theta i. Now here you remember that talk that when we will taking the phaser our frequency will be constant. So whenever the frequency is constant then only we can operate with phasor quantity. So these are the sinusoidal quantity equation that we will be using. Now coming to the instantaneous power. If we, if we take the product of the voltage and current that is the instantaneous quantity then we can get the equation in the form of this. With certain manipulations uh, using the trigonometric rules uh, which we are using as the product of cosine function cos a and cos b then the instantaneous power equation is what is given in the uh, box. So there are two terms in the instantaneous power equation. So we will discuss these two terms what are they. So this is the equation of instantaneous power which is the product of voltage and current and it is written in the form of cosine function. Now you can see that instantaneous power has two terms. This is the first term and this is the second term. If we go by the first term, what is that or the first part? You can see that the first part is basically a constant or time independent. It is not a function of time. There is no time uh, quantity involved in the first part and its value depends on the phase difference between the voltage and the current. So the phase difference between the voltage and the current will give me uh, the cos will give me a constant term because we are multiplying with the cosine of the phase difference and that is multiplied with the maximum uh, amplitude of the voltage and current. So this is basically a constant which is independent of time factor. If we go by the second term or the second part we see that it is a sinusoidal function of cosine whose frequency is 2 omega. It means that you can see that frequency is 2 omega here. It means that the second part is having a frequency which is twice the frequency of the voltage or the current. We have taken a constant frequency of omega for the voltage or current and the instantaneous power part, instantaneous power second part, we are having 
twice the frequency of the voltage and the current. The instantaneous power is periodic in nature. Periodic in nature means it is repetitive with a time period of 2 pi by omega. So 2 pi by omega is the period for the instantaneous power uh, equation. Now if you draw the waveform for the power on the y-axis that is the instantaneous power with respect to time, we see that the time period t which is equal to 2 pi by omega is the period for the instantaneous power. Now instantaneous power is somewhere positive and some part is negative. If we see throughout the AC cycle, we get some part to be positive and some part to be negative. When instantaneous power is positive, it means that power is absorbed by the circuit or the element. So if you have an element and the instantaneous power is positive, obviously the power is absorbed by the circuit. Now, if the instantaneous power is negative, what happened in that part? So here you see the instantaneous power is negative. Here, the power is absorbed by the source and not the load. The meaning is that the power is transferred from the circuit to the source. Usually the power will go from source to the load. So then the instantaneous power will be positive. Now, if the power is moving back to the source, then the instantaneous power is negative. Now, why the instantaneous power is uh, negative? How it can be possible? It is possible because in AC circuit, there will be energy storage element, the inductors and the capacitors, which on the negative half cycle will deliver the power to the source. Now, the instantaneous power changes with time. So it is a function of time and it changes with time and therefore it is very difficult to measure. So each and every instant of time the instantaneous power is changing. So it is difficult to measure. So we don't go by instantaneous power. Rather, uh, we take one more term that is the average power which is more convenient in measuring the power quantity. So we are not measuring the instantaneous power. We are measuring the average power. So watt meter which is a device used for measuring the power, it is responding to average power only. It is not responding to the instantaneous power. So the average over a time period we are measuring that is known as the average power. Now let us go in deep in average power. So average power is defined as the average of the instantaneous power over one period. So you know that one period is equal to 2 pi by omega. So over one period we are averaging the instantaneous power. Now let us see by mathematical derivation what is happening. So the power now remember when we have the function of time we write small p in bracket t. This is known as instantaneous power. If we have the capital P it is known as the average power. So it is a notation. Now average power is basically the average of the instantaneous power. So here you see there is instantaneous power P of t and we are taking the average over one time period. So 1 by t and integrating from 0 to t dt. Now if I substitute the power instantaneous power equation that we have derived in the previous slide here to get the average power equation. So on integrating we will be getting some terms here and we will see more in deep like what does this term indicates. So on integrating the instantaneous power to get the average power we are getting one mathematical equation. Now let us see what is happening. The first integrand is basically a constant. So if we see this first term it is basically a constant while the second integrand is basically a sinusoid. So there are two terms, one is a constant term and another is a sinusoid term. Now we know that the average of a sinusoid over its period is zero because the reason is the area under the sinusoid during a positive half cycle will be cancelled by the area under the negative half cycle. So when you take the area under the positive half cycle and the area under the negative half cycle both will cancel out each other. So the average of the sinusoid over a period is basically zero. 
Now, if it is so, then how do we are getting the average power equation? So, we will be not having this part because the average will be zero and the first part, these term will become uh, cutting out each other and we will be getting the value half Vm Im cos of theta V minus theta I. This difference is basically the phase difference between the voltage and the current. So, this is the equation of the average power which a watt meter is measuring. Now, we have the instantaneous power equation, we have the average power equation. We will give, we will get into more deep into this to understand more phenomena. So, the instantaneous power is basically a time varying quantity. You can see that it is a time varying quantity. It is depending upon the time. The first part is a constant, the other part is time varying which is a cosine function. Whereas the average power if we are talking about, it does not depend on time. That is a very good important point that it does not depend upon time. So measuring of the average power is very uh, useful and it is helpful also. So average power is not dependent upon time. The instantaneous power depends upon the instantaneous amount of voltage and the current in the time domain. So you have to calculate the instantaneous power only in the time domain. Whereas the average power can be determined both in the time domain as well as in the frequency domain. So we can measure this uh, average power both in the time domain as well as in the frequency domain because it is not a function of the time. Now when we are uh, operating in time domain, we have to get this maximum uh, amplitude of the voltage and maximum amplitude of the current and their difference in the time quantity, a time difference. And the frequency domain, we have to convert these in phasors. So that we are going to see. Now we know that the phasor of the voltage and the phasor of the current equation can be written like this, which we have already read in the previous lectures that when we have the phasor voltage V, it is written in the form of Vm angle theta V and the current phasor is written Im angle theta I. Now what is happening? We have a quantity half Vm Im. Let us see this quantity. What is happening here? If we are operating uh, half Vm Im, then we can write that in the form of half Vi conjugate. Now you know that what is the meaning of conjugate? If we have a complex number x plus jy and the conjugate of this will be equal to x minus jy. Okay, there will be a negative sign in the imaginary term. So half vi conjugate is equal to half vm im theta v minus theta i. Now here you see it, it is half vm im cos of theta v minus theta i. So the angle is basically negative sign is coming because we have taken a conjugate of the current. So if you take the conjugate of the current, there will be a negative sign appearing here. Now if we write this in a trigonometric form, splitting it into cosine function and the sine function. So this equation of the average power, there is a cosine term. So it means that the imaginary term is not required for getting the average power. So the average power can be written as half of real value of Vi conjugate. So if you have the complex voltage or the phasor and the uh, phasor uh, current conjugate, then the real value of this because this will be in complex quantity because you have the angle theta V and theta I. The real part of Vi conjugate multiplied with half will give you the average power which is equal to half Vm Im cos theta V minus theta I. So we can see that the average power can be operated or calculated both in the time domain and frequency domain but the instantaneous power can be calculated only in the time domain. Now let us uh, go into deep in average power equation which is half of real of Vi conjugate where V i here represent the phasor and half Vm im cos theta V minus theta i is coming from the time domain. 
what is happening if the circuit is purely resistive circuit purely resistive circuit means there is no inductor or capacitive effect then the phase difference between the voltage and current will be zero there will be no phase difference between the voltage and the current and hence you will be having cos of zero here now the power will be equal to half vm in because cos of zero equal to one and i can write that in the form of half im square r because i know that im is equal to v, uh, vm is equal to im by r okay so i can write this in this format of ohm's law sorry vm is equal to im into r so that equation i am writing it here in this form where i can write it in the form of half current phasor square into r because i know that the current phasor square is equal to i into i conjugate so if i want to calculate the average power for a purely resistive network where there is no inductor or a capacitor i can write it in the form of half im square r in the time domain or half square of the phasor current multiplied with the resistor now purely reactive network if you have a purely reactive network means either the inductor is there or the capacitor is there then the phase difference between the voltage and the current will be plus minus 90 degree depending upon whether it is an inductor or a capacitor now here you see it if i substitute cos of 90 because the phase and phase difference between the voltage and current will be equal to 90 degree then the power will be zero so what does it indicate it indicates that if you have a resistive load it will absorb power at all times while a reactive load absorb zero average power so whenever you are dealing with l or c that is the inductor or a capacitor your average power is basically zero so there is no average power for inductor or a capacitor but for a resistor it will consume the average power we'll solve one problem to understand uh, given a voltage equation which is instantaneous and the current equation is also instantaneous find the instantaneous power and the average power absorbed by the passive linear network so you see that in the equation uh, 120 is basically vm and omega is basically 377 so omega remain same for the voltage and the current so 377 and 377 here indicates that omega because the first thing that we need to know whether the frequency is constant or not if the frequency is not constant you will not able to operate the instantaneous power so here since the frequency is constant we can go with it the phase difference of voltage is 45 degree and the phase difference of current is equal to minus of 10 degree where 10 is basically maximum amplitude of the current so the instantaneous power is basically the product of voltage into current so we have the voltage equation we have the current equation we multiply both to get the instantaneous power now this one uh, we have to reduce it in the form of the instantaneous power equation using the trigonometric rule uh, identity that we have used previously also so we are getting the instantaneous power in this form where we have 600 cos of some cosine term plus cos of 50 degree now if you break this into much better format what we are getting as we have discussed for the instantaneous power we are having a constant term and we have one term with a cosine of 2 omega so here you see we have a 377 here omega so now here we have a cosine term which is the frequency of 2 omega term now this is the equation that we have got for the instantaneous power now the second thing we need to calculate the average power so average power equation is half vm im cos of the phase difference between the voltage and the current so we substitute vm and im from the uh, equation of instantaneous power and the phase difference between theta m theta v and theta i so we will get 344.2 watt as the average power so average power is the one which is measured by the watt meter when we try to measure the ac power for any rlc network or any circuit so this is a constant part of p of t so here you see in the instantaneous power we have got 344.2 
and here in the average power we have got 344.2 which indicates that this is the constant part of the instantaneous power. Now we will go for maximum average power transfer. If you remember we have studied the maximum power transfer theorem where we know that maximum power can be transferred when the load resistance RL is equal to the Thevenin resistance. So this we have studied. Now here this is for the DC network. What happened for the AC network that we are going to see. So maximum power transfer theorem says that for a DC network that load resistance has to be equal to the Thevenin resistance then only maximum power can be transferred when you have only the resistive uh, elements in the circuit. Now for the AC circuit, if we have the AC circuit which is a linear circuit and we have a load impedance ZL which is connected at the terminal, then this circuit can be broke up as the voltage Thevenin and Z Thevenin, the linear circuit and the load impedance ZL will be here which is drawing a current I. Now here you see we have a load impedance, we have Thevenin in, uh, impedance. We do not have R Thevenin or RL. Instead of that, R Thevenin has become Z Thevenin and RL has become ZL. That is the load impedance and the Thevenin impedance. Now what we can write, the Z Thevenin is equal to R Thevenin plus J times X Thevenin. ZL is equal to RL plus J times XL. So we have broke up in the real term and the imaginary term of the Thevenin impedance and the load impedance. Now let us determine what is the current which is flowing in this network. So the current which is flowing in this network is basically the voltage divided by the series combination of Z Thevenin and ZL. So Z Thevenin plus ZL is a series combination. Now if we uh, segregate the part of Z Thevenin and ZL and then try to determine the power. So the average power we have seen the equation half current square into RL. So uh, if we substitute the value of the current here and try to find what is half I square RL, this is the power equation. This is the average power. Now this power I need to maximize. I need to maximize this power that is the maximize power transfer theorem. Now if you remember in DC network what we do, we have differentiated the power with respect to RL that is the load resistance. Now here we have the reactance also. So we have to differentiate the power with respect to XL. And then we have to equate this with 0, we have to equate this with 0. So then we have to find the condition. So we have to find the power differential equation with respect to the register RL and with respect to XL. And then we have to equate the value of del P by de, uh, del RL to be 0 and del P by del XL to be 0 and try to find the condition. So what is the con condition we are getting? The load resistance is equal to minus of X Thevenin and load resistance is equal to the square root of R Thevenin square plus X Thevenin plus XL square. These are the conditions we are getting on applying the maximum power transfer for del P by del X L to be 0 and del P by del R to be 0. We are differentiating the inductive part and the resistive part of the power and then what we are getting finally. So we are getting that the load impedance ZL which is written in the form of RL plus JXL. So RL we have the, this quantity and XL we have this quantity. Now here you see XL plus X Thevenin we are doing. So XL equal to minus of X Thevenin. It means it will cancel out each other. Then what we are going to get? The load resistance RL is equal to R Thevenin and XL is equal to minus of X Thevenin. It means finally we are getting that the load impedance should be equal to the conjugate of the Thevenin impedance. Earlier what we have got for a DC network, the load resistance is equal to the Thevenin resistance for the DC network for maximum power. Now for the AC, we are getting that 
the load impedance is equal to the conjugate of the impedance of the thevenin impedance why the conjugate because we have a negative sign here that is the reason this conjugate is appearing so maximum power transfer theorem for ac network says that the load impedance must be equal to the complex conjugate of the thevenin impedance now the power maximum if you remember we have discussed uh, in dc part that power maximum is equal to v thevenin square divided by we have four times rl we were having this equation derived now here we are having maximum power is equal to v thevenin square divided by eight times r thevenin and we are taking the magnitude of v thevenin because the reason is that here we will be having the complex quantity so we are not dealing with the real term we are not dealing with the imaginary term rather we are dealing with the absolute term so v thevenin square divided by eight times r thevenin here we have the four and here we have eight for the maximum power now under a special case when the inductive part is zero it means the circuit is purely resistive then the load resistance will be equal to the max amplitude or the absolute value of the thevenin impedance so we have to remember this equation we have to remember this equation for solving the maximum power transfer theorem problem we will solve one problem to understand determine the load impedance zl that maximize the average power drawn from the circuit so what is this value of zl that will give me the maximum power transferred from the source to the load and what is the amp value of that maximum power that we have to calculate now first thing that we need to see whether all the quantities are in ohms or not if it is not in ohms we have to convert that in ohms first because if you have an inductor and capacitor in uh, henry and farad then you have to get the value of xl and xc this is the first thing that we have to do it second thing we have to do is that we have to observe the source if the source is written in the form of cos of omega t like the source is written in the form of vm cos omega t plus phi then we have to convert that into the phasor form so vm angle of phi we have to convert that in that format so here already this is written in the form of a phasor and all the quantities are in ohms so we need not to disturb the circuit we will simply calculate what is the value of zl that will give the maximum power so two circuit we have to draw first that is to get the value of z thevenin and to get the value of voltage thevenin you know that when we try to get the value of z thevenin then voltage source will be short circuited all independent sources a uh, voltage source will be short circuited all independent current source will be open circuited here we have only the voltage source so that we are short circuiting we are getting a circuit uh, which will be useful for getting the value of z thevenin now for voltage thevenin we will open circuit the load impedance and try to determine the open circuit voltage at the terminal where the load uh, impedance is connected so voltage thevenin and z thevenin are the one which we have to calculate for the two network so first we calculate the z thevenin z thevenin we can calculate using the principle of series parallel combination of the impedance we have to take uh, these impedance as z1 this impedance we can take uh, z2 and this is we can take z3 so what is happening uh, we have z3 parallel with z1 and then it is in series with z2 that is what we are doing to find the z thevenin now voltage thevenin is basically the open circuit voltage here so it means that if we need to determine that we have to get what is the voltage across this 8 minus j6 ohms resistance because it will be having the same voltage no current is flowing here so the voltage will be same for the voltage thevenin so we are applying the voltage division rule here to find the voltage thevenin please revise the voltage division rule uh, to understand uh, how we have done this then uh, we will get the value of the voltage thevenin we have got the value of z thevenin and now we will put the condition our condition is the load impedance 
will be equal to the complex conjugate of the Thevenin impedance. So here we have the positive sign that we have to convert into negative sign to get the complex conjugate. So this is the impedance uh, which we are getting the first part of the solution that for power maximum what is the impedance. Second, what is the maximum power? So maximum power is basically V Thevenin square divided by 8 times R Thevenin. Now remember here if you see this is basically a complex quantity where we are dealing with only the amplitude. So 7.454 is only the amplitude that we are dealing uh, to determine the power maximum and 8 times the resistance Thevenin here. So on the denominator you have resistance Thevenin which is equal to 2.933 because you can write this in the form of R Thevenin minus J time X Thevenin. So we are getting R Thevenin here only. So R Thevenin is this that will give you the maximum power. So maximum power is 2.368 watt for this particular problem. We'll take one topic which is effective or RMS value. RMS means root mean square. Now where from this idea has come that uh, we need to determine the effective value. So the idea of calculating the effective value arises from the need to measure the effectiveness of voltage or a current source in delivering power to a resistive load. For a, that is what if you have a resistive load RL, you have a source either voltage or a current then what is the effectiveness or what is the impact that this voltage or a current source have on delivering to the resistance. Now remember these voltage and current are the AC quantities. These are phasors and this is the load resistance. We are not dealing with ZL. We are dealing with only RL. So the effective value of a periodic current, current will always be periodic or the voltage will be always periodic, is the DC current that delivers the same average power to a register as the periodic current. So we are calculating the effective or RMS value. What is the effective value? Effective value of a periodic current. Current is periodic and I have to determine the effect of that periodic current. It is the DC current because we are dealing with AC current. So I should understand what is the magnitude of the DC current that will deliver the same average power to the register as the periodic current. So this periodic current is basically AC. This DC current is DC. So the same impact has to be there. Same average power has to be there. That is the meaning effective or RMS value. Now here let us see the network. Here we have a circuit which is a AC circuit. We can take this one is AC circuit. Why AC circuit? Because you have a voltage which is time dependent. Okay. This is a function of time. However, the load impedance ZL is only the resistive part is there in the network and this is a time dependent current is flowing in the network. Now I will I have to get one equivalent circuit of this which will give me the same effectiveness. So the voltage will be replaced with voltage effective, the current will be replaced with current effective and the load will remain the same. So what is the voltage effective and current effective? that will give me the same effect or same impact here. So this value and this value we are going to derive from these values of the voltage and the current. So the average power P is equal to 1 by T integral of I square R dt. Now remember here small i indicates the instantaneous value of the current. Now here we are getting R by T integral of 0 T I square dt. Now power here in this network is basically I effective square into R. Okay. So this circuit is from here. This equation is from here. Okay. So it means that if we equate the power, if we equate this power and this power, we are getting that the effective value of the current is equal to one by uh, square root of one by T zero to T i square dt. Now here you see what is the name root mean square. So what is that we are having? This is a root and this is a mean. This one is mean and that is what we are squaring it. So this is known as root mean square. Same effect we are getting for the voltage. Only thing is that here we have the current. So we are getting I effective. 
Here we have the voltage instantaneous, so we will get the voltage effective. Effective value and RMS value are the same name. So we are saying I effective equal to I RMS and V effective is equal to V RMS. So we have the root and then we are taking the mean. Mean we are taking 1 by T because we are dividing with the time period and then we are taking the square of the current. So root means square. Okay, so that is the meaning coming from. Now, if you have any periodic function x of t, the root mean square will be written in this format x rms. Okay, whether it is a voltage, current, or any other quantity which is a function of time and it is periodic in nature. So we have a root here, we have a mean here, and we have a square here. So there is a root mean square. Now i rms that is if we are substituting the value of the current here because we know that the current will be i m cos of omega dt then if we uh, take the uh, rms value of that we will be getting i m by root 2 so i rms very important equation i rms is equal to i m by root 2 similarly we will get v rms is equal to v m by root 2 this is very important equation I RMS root mean square is equal to I M by root 2 and V RMS is equal to V M that is a maximum magnitude divided by root 2. Now we have got the value of I RMS and V RMS. Can we put this value in the average power? So average power we are having half V M I M. So we can write this one V M by root 2 and I M by root 2. Root 2 and root 2 will multiply to become 2 here and then on the numerator we have vm into im so that vm by root 2 we can write vrms im by root 2 we can write irms and this will be cos theta v minus theta I. so the power equation here you see it it will be vrms irms cos of the phase difference between the voltage and the current the same equation we are getting in the time domain format is half vm im cos theta v minus theta i only changes will be here only change will be here okay then the power value will be equal to i rms square into r or v rms square by r now for a ac network whenever ac network is there we are dealing with we are dealing with the rms quantity that is the root mean square quantity to deal with the power consumed by the load some important point let us see and conclude this topic when a sinusoidal voltage or a current is specified it is often in terms of the maximum value or the rms value maximum means peak value since its average value is zero always the average value will be zero because it is periodic in nature you have it is periodic it is continuous okay so average value will be zero so we are not interested in the average value we are interested in either the average value or the rms value power industries specify the phasor magnitude in terms of their rms value rather than peak value what is the meaning that if we have the equation v it is written in the form of vm angle of theta this is your phasor right so obviously we are always telling this that this is the maximum value of the voltage now power industries they prefer to give this value in the form of uh, the rms value you know that v rms is equal to vm by root 2 it means that vm we have to calculate as vm we have to calculate as v rms multiplied with root 2 okay so this is Although it is a maximum uh, amplitude, we know that, but power industries prefer to give the RMS quantity here. For instance, let us take the example. When we say 110 volt available at every household, then we say that the RMS value of the voltage is given by the power company. So these 110 volt, like for example, we, in our house, we say that 230 volt single phase AC supply is coming. Okay, for the household, this 230 volt is basically the RMS value. It is neither the average value nor the maximum value. It is the RMS value that is the root mean square value that is being specified by the power company. It is convenient in power analysis to express the voltage and current in the RMS value. 
So we will be dealing with the RMS value when we are dealing with the voltage and the current. Now all the analog voltmeters and ammeters generally measure the current or the voltage in RMS value only. We measure the current or voltage in RMS value. So the uh, conclusion of this uh, chapter when we are dealing with the AC analysis, the major conclusion is that it is the RMS value that we will be dealing with. So whenever the quantity is given to you in AC, then it is basically the RMS value. It is neither the average value nor the maximum value. This is always the RMS value.